In this video we're going to cover assembling the cylinder head and that will include installing the valves, checking the valve seats for proper contact area, um, checking the valve guides for, for wear and proper fit to the valve stem, checking installing the valve guide seal, installing the valve spring and retainer and keepers, and looking at your cam chain and cam chain guides for any unusual wear. The special tools that you'll need for this assembly would be the valve spring compressor and all of the manufacturers have special tools lists where you can purchase theirs. Um, this one is from one of the large aftermarket tool manufacturers and it's, it's a little more universal so if you work on more than one brand in your garage then you might want to get this one. Um, the other thing that we have here are these gauge pins which is to check the diameter of the valve stem and see what the internal size of it is. Um, there's other ways to measure that too but this is the way that I prefer and these can be found at any uh, machine shop supply or um, a tool supply store probably. The first thing we're going to do is check the, uh, the fitment of the valve itself to the seat in the head. Um, if you're assembling new parts, it's probably not necessary, and by new I mean both a new head and a new valve. Um, if it's used parts, then it needs to be checked. If one or the other is, is a used part, it needs to be checked. If you're putting a new valve into a used head, which is the most common case, you need to check it. It's almost like putting a pist new piston in your old cylinder and not bothering, bothering to check the piston clearance. It's, it's that critical that you check it. If the valve doesn't seat correctly into the valve seat, um, it's going to leak, it's going to wear out quicker, you're just not going to get the performance out of it and you're not going to get the lifetime out of it that you're expecting. To check the valve contact to the valve seat contact in the head, um, you can color it with a magic marker. Um, that's the easiest way usually have one laying around in the house someplace. Um, you can also use machinist dye too, but um, it's the m marker actually I think works better because it's thinner and it wears off easier so you can get a quicker view of what's really happening. Um, we also want to coat the valve seat also where the valve would touch it, so I'm kind of doing this quick, but you just want to go in here and kind of cover it all up good. Um, a wider tip marker is probably a little better than this Sharpie, but it, as long as you get color on it, that's all that matters. Okay, so now that we have the coating or the marking on the valve and the valve seat, we'll put the valve in place where it belongs. Um, and you also want to mark the valves um, one, two, three, four, or intake left, intake right, so that you keep track of where they went and where you, which seat you match them to. Uh, again, if it's, if it's new parts, new head, new valves, it's probably all going to be fine. It's all, you can switch valves around at this point and it's fine. But once something is used, it's got to stay in the same place it was. So we're going to tip it over. Um, there's several ways to, to spin the valve to, to get the uh, magic marker worn off of it to see the contact area. Um, this is, again, this is just a way that almost anybody in their garage is going to have. There's also some tools you can get from your automotive tool supply store that, that have suction cups on them that can turn the valve from, the, from this end and you can spin the valve in your hands and wear the coating or the marker off of it. Um, this, this way is simple. I just find a piece of fuel line, slide it over the valve stem, and then you just roll it in your hands and spin the valve and do it for a minute or so and then it'll wear the magic marker off and you can see where the metal to metal contact is. So now that we've worn the magic marker coating off the valve and the seat we can see the contact area that they each have to each other. You can see on this intake valve um, where it's worn off right here, that's where it's, it's the valve is contacting the seat. 
And similarly on the valve seat in the head, you can see where the, the magic marker coating wore off and that's the contact area that the valve has to the seat in the head. Your uh, shop manual will have some diagrams and some measurements and some guides to show you what the correct seat contact area is. Um, so you'll always want to check that if you're in doubt. Okay, and now the next question is, I have a used head and the contact area isn't right, so what do I do? Well, in most cases you'll want to go to a dealer or an automotive machine shop that has the correct tools to recut your seat in your head to match your new valve. Um, you're not going to cut a seat to match a used valve, that just isn't the right way to do it. But if you're putting in new valves, like I mentioned before, you should always check the seat contact area. Most likely, if the head's used and it has very many hours on it, it's going to need a little bit of tune-up on the seat. So this, this is what one of the ways to cut seats. There's computerized machines and there's other things too that, that can be used, but this is your basic normal shop tool here. And again, all the OE manufacturers sell cutters for their heads that are specific to their models. Um, this particular one is, is more of an automotive type model. It's got replaceable cutters on it and many, many different angles and diameters that you can purchase. Um, very high quality tool, probably more so than the OEs sell. But how this works is there's a, a tight fitting pilot that goes inside the valve stem and that will line up the cutter perfectly with, with the valve. And then you've got your cutter in various angles and diameters. And that goes on here. And then you just carefully turn it. I'm not going to turn it on this one because the seat's already okay. We don't want to remove anything. But you would turn it just very little bit, turn it a time, and then recheck the, the contact that you have and see if you need to cut it anymore. And I can't stress enough, if you don't really understand what I'm doing here or you've never seen these tools, you're much better off to go to somebody who can do it and do it right rather than ruin your $500 cylinder head.